everyone and welcome back to another edition of Rich Tea Racing. Now in today's edition I'm hopefully going to be starting a little bit of a series and that is looking at every single F1 car that every single constructor on the grid has made between 2010 and 2019 and ranking them in a tier list, you know, the type of thing you see on YouTube sort of all the time. I mean, it's quite, it's relatively popular at the moment. Now, obviously, there are a few stipulations to this. Obviously, uh, Haas have only been in Formula One since 2016, so they don't have enough cars between 2010 and 2019. Obviously, Racing Point and Alfa Romeo only took those names for the 2019 season, so I'm going to have to look at them. I'm going to have to include Force India and Sauber in that, but effectively they are the same team, so there's not too much in the way of discrepancy there. Uh, the way I'm going to be ranking them um, is that I'm going to look at where the team finished in, or where the team is now and compare the cars through the years to to where they are now. It's pretty simple like that. There's going to be a couple of mitigating factors that I'll take into account when obviously making the list. I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through at that point. But yeah, that's the basic introduction. So without any further ado, let's get into this video where we are going to be looking at the 2010 to 2019 cars for Mercedes. Okay, so here we go then with the tier list. I'm sure you've seen this sort of thing before. I'll just briefly explain uh, the ranking system that I'm going for. Uh, at the top, we've got GOAT, obviously greatest of all time. Uh, scintillating for the ones that were properly decent, properly, properly good cars. Then you've got the ones for that are just, in my mind, just decent. Then just the meh ones that don't really leave much in the imagination. And then the dog one for the really, really just bottom of the pile. So we're going to begin then in chronological order and go for the 2010 Mercedes. Now first of all this car is what the Braun car would have been had Braun stayed in the championship so it didn't have much investment. It was also definitely set up for Jensen Button and that sort of, it, it wasn't destined to do brilliantly, but actually it did quite well. It got a couple of podiums at the start of the year with Nico Rosberg at Malaysia and at China. He might have cropped up with one or two more throughout the season. Again, I'm not entirely sure. Actually, yes, sorry, uh, Britain. That's he got a podium there as well. And Schumacher would come in with the occasional fourth place, but that was really it for the car. It didn't do anything overly spectacular. It came forth in the championship uh, and that's one of the most forgettable positions uh, in the F1 Constructors Championship. So therefore, it's just going to go in meh. Now we've got the 2011 car and like its predecessor, it came in fourth in the championship, uh, uh, an achievement that cannot be understated. But again, it Again, it, as I say, it is the one of the most forgettable of the positions, and this Mercedes, unfortunately, has the, the distinction of being the only Mercedes car on this list that never stood on the podium. And, you know, it had one good race, as far as my memory can serve, uh, at the 2011 Canadian Grand Prix, where Schumacher could have got a podium had it not been for that final safety car, and in the dry, or in, on, certainly on the dry line, fighting off the red ball of Mark Webber and Jensen Button, didn't stand a chance. So, for again, it's just the fact it never stood on the podium, didn't do anything too spectacular, that reason, it can only be the dog of the par, the runt of the litter, if you will. Now we have the 2012 car, and this car obviously took Mercedes' first victory since it returned to Formula 1 at the 2012 Chinese Grand Prix with Nico Rosberg. Rosberg would also take, I think he took pole position in that race, and he would take a podium at Monaco as well. Michael Schumacher, meanwhile, could have been leading the championship at certain stages if it weren't for the instance he got caught up in, and also a few reliability issues. He also took pole at the Monaco Grand Prix, but got demoted down to uh, sixth following a, an incident at the uh, Spanish Grand Prix that was deemed his fault, but he did stand on the podium at the European Grand Prix in Valencia. And that was sort of the last good thing this car really did, being brutally honest, and it also finished in fifth in the championship, Mercedes' worst finishing position um, since their return to Formula One. But the race win and the podiums it got give it the same status for me as the 2010 car. 
So now we're on to the 2013 card. This obviously saw the departure of Michael Schumacher and ushered in Lewis Hamilton. Now of the Hamilton Mercedes cars, if that's what you want to call them, this is technically the worst. He only ever picked up one win in it. Uh, Rosberg picked up two wins. The car actually finished in second in the championship, but it was much like every car except the Red Bull that year. It was a flip floppy car. It could be brilliant in qualifying, like in Spain, it took a one, two, and then in the race just could not look after its tires and would fall back. I think Hamilton finished 12th in that race. I'm not even sure if Rosberg finished in the points, but it signified genuine progress from the Mercedes team, particularly with the 2014 change regulations coming up. The fact they went really, they developed this car really well. It won races. It should have probably won more, deserved its second place. And for me, for me, it can go in decent. Well done to the 2013 car. So now we're on to the 2014 car, and this is the car that uh, Lewis Hamilton joined Mercedes for. This is what was temp this is what tempted him away from McLaren. The prospect of Mercedes going on to create something truly brilliant in 2014 and that is what they did. This car took 16 victories out of 19 races. The only races it lost were down to reliability and one freak race in uh, Hungary and also, and also uh, clashes together. That word there, reliability, did dog this car a bit. Uh, Hamilton retired from the first race. I think actually Lewis Hamilton and uh, Rosberg suffered the same amount of mechanical failures as each other, about three. They had a few comings together as well, but that's not what we're really looking at here. We're looking more at the car. And yes, whilst it had those reliability problems, it was so much further ahead than the rest of the field. It blew the competition away. And for that reason, it's gonna go it's gonna go in scintillating. Not quite a goat, but certainly a fantastic car. And I'm gonna say it now, the exact same can be said, said for the 2015 effort. This car did exactly the same as the 2014 one. It took uh, 16 victories out of 19 races. This was the first car for me though, where uh, the weaknesses of the Mercedes car were exploited a bit. If you look at Mal the races that didn't win, Malaysia, Hungary, and Singapore, unlike in 2014, where it only didn't win those races because of uh, obviously the, the freak Hungary 2014 race, and then uh, the contact in Belgium and the uh, unreliability in uh, Canada for the 2015 car Malaysia they it, it lost its races on merit 2015 they got outdone by Ferrari on strategy and on tires and the car could not they could not keep up with the Ferrari same thing in Hungary as Hamilton had a bit of a shocker and Rosberg wasn't really there either and also in Singapore that freak weekend for the Mercedes team where they were they qualified like fifth and sixth it was it was hopeless for them, really. Um, but again, still, they um, they the next weekend they went on and got a one-two and won the championship. Not very long after that. So again, exactly the same as the 2014 one. Pretty much, few differences, but for for again for those reasons, it belongs um, in the same category. So we come on to the 2016 car now, and there's really no other place to put this car except for goat. This car, okay, it had some reliability problems for Lewis Hamilton in particular. I don't think Rosberg had any mechanical issues at all during the season. Hamilton had a few, obviously, and Malaysia costed him the World Championship. The oh no, no moment. That was obviously really tragic to see. Apart from that, this car should have won every single race it went into. The only races it didn't win were obviously uh, the Spanish Grand Prix where Hamilton and Rosberg came together and the Malaysian Grand Prix where Hamilton had his retirement but had Vettel not um, uh, knocked Rosberg off. You can be pretty much guaranteed the pace Hamilton was going at, uh, Rosberg would have been there to win the race. Um, this, again, 19 out of 21 victories, couple of reliability issues, but other than that, uh, we haven't seen a car that dominant since, so it has to be the GOAT. Now, when it comes to the next two, the 2017 and 2018, I'm going to consider them basically the same. And this is going to be controversial what I'm going to do here, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them both at decent. Now, let me explain as to why. First of all, these cars won, in their respective season, won less than these, than these three. So I'm just not sure they can be considered on the same level. And it should also be pointed out that in 17 and 18, the Ferrari was better. <laughs> it just was. I know that might be difficult for some people. That might be a difficult pill for some people to swallow. But it just was. It was 
The Ferraris were the better car. It just, Vettel should have won 17. I'm convinced if it hadn't been for some questionable Ferrari uh, reliability and obviously for the Vettel's erratic, erratic driving in 2018. These cars just, of the championship winning cars, they just weren't that scintillating. So I can't put it in the scintillating category. For me, they're just decent. I mean, yes, they won the constructors and the drivers and... Um, Obviously, Bottas won three races with the Mercedes with the 2017 car. They got into double digits um, for race victories throughout both seasons. It's, they, they're still fantastic cars, but they're just for me, they're just not on the same level as these three. And of course, as as this, the 2019 car. Now, I was originally going to put this in goat, but I've been thinking about it and. Do you know what? I can't help but think I'm just going to put it down here in scintillating. Because, let's face it, okay, this car was absolutely fantastic at the start of the season. It was so dominant, there's no other way to put it. It won all of the eight first races. It was a 1-2 in every race in the first five races up until Monaco. And it, w it won the championship Already, pretty much by by the time by the time we reached that eighth race, I think it was Paul Ricard. Hamilton had wrapped up the championship by uh, Germany, but once once Red Bull and Ferrari caught up, it just it just fell off the bubble a bit. And it has to be pointed out, it only won compared to these three, it won less races. It only won 15 out of the 21. Obviously, 16 out of 19, 19 out of 21. It just doesn't have as good a record as these three cars. And I would feel a little bit wrong putting it above these two. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is a bad car by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying when compared to these three cars, it is not on the same level. It is, it is better than the 17 and 18 cars, but I don't think for the Mercedes cars that have been made, it is as good as these three. But there we go. That is my list. That is uh, what we've got for the Mercedes cars of the 2010s. Obviously the best being the uh, 2016. Then we go down to 14, 15 and 19, then 13, 17, 18, 10 and 12, and finally 11. So there we go guys, that is the end of the video. That is my list for the 2010 to 2019 Mercedes cars. Uh, I will leave a link in the description to that tier list so you can go and do it yourself. Or you can let me know in the comments what your ranking of the 2010 to 2019 Mercedes cars would be. But yes, as always guys, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And the final thing I should say for now is ta-ta and farewell.